Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have my March reading wrap up for you. This month I did not do a mid-month wrap up, so this is going to be every single book I read in the month of March. So let's just get right into it. So like I mentioned, I did not do a mid-month wrap up this month, and that's because I've been getting over like a really bad reading slump and sort of like video slump. I haven't been in the mood to film or read or really just like do anything lately. And about halfway through the month I did start sort of pick back up my reading and things were, you know, back to sort of where they used to be. So I did end up with 11 books this month, which was pretty good because like I said, I've been really like slow on reading lately. So let's just get into the books that I read. So the first book I read was Royally Screwed by Emma Chase. And this book, I honestly, I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember a ton about. I gave this one either three or four stars. I think now at this point I would say it was a three star because I don't remember a ton about it and it's only been like less than a month since I read it. This one, from what I do remember, follows a girl who ends up dating a prince. Obviously from the title you kind of get that vibes. I did like this one. I'm usually pretty hesitant with books that deal with like royalty because sometimes I really don't like how that's done. I'm just, I don't know, I'm really picky about that and I don't even know why. Like I just, I don't like a lot of things that surround that general like plot I guess. And so I was a little hesitant with this one. I did really enjoy it. I thought it was pretty good for what it was. It is part of a series. I don't like, I think this is one of the things that I don't like in like royalty romances. And this one had it is, I hate when they're very obviously based on William and Harry, like in real life. I just, I don't know. I wish people would write more like fictional princes that weren't necessarily like the redheaded troublemaker and then like the older, like more mature one. And this book sort of did that with the brothers. There's two brothers, one's, you know, younger, more rebellious, I guess, than the older one. And I just wish the books would sort of, you know, go their own route when it comes to that. And this one didn't, so that was kind of disappointing. But like I said, it was okay. Not the best, but wasn't bad either. Next, I read The 15th Minute by Serena Bowen. This was the last book in the Ivy Years series. And honestly, wasn't super impressed with this one either. I think I gave this one three stars. This one follows a girl who's in college who is super super famous. She's an actress. A lot of people know her and she ends up dating this guy who DJs the hockey games basically. And one of the things that I thought was kind of odd about this series, and I did like it but it was just sort of weird, was I thought it was a hockey series but honestly only one of the books really focuses on someone who's actively playing hockey. All the other books are sort of people that are like close to the hockey team but not necessarily on it or involved with it and so in this one the guy is the younger brother of a guy from the team so that's sort of how it's connected but I think what I didn't love about this one was and this is like totally me just like being dumb and not realizing this but this series is actually the like first series and then there's a spin-off called the Brooklyn Bruisers and I've already read the Brooklyn Bruiser series and I didn't realize it was a spinoff of these books. And so when I found out that the girl in this book was dating Trevi's younger brother, I was kind of disappointed because I was hoping we would get a Leo Trevi book because I really just fell in love with him reading this whole series and was hoping he'd get a book and then he just like didn't. And I was like super mad about that for most of this book and so I got to the very end and it had like that little sort of like promo thing for you know Serena Bowen's other books and it was like if you want to read Leo Trevi's book read you know Brookie Move by Serena Bowen and I was like oh my god I already read that book and I loved it so like I think it's funny that I did know I was gonna love his book and I had already read it and did love it but I didn't make the connection that I'd already read it because I don't really remember names after I read books unless they're like my all-time favorite books and so I didn't even realize I'd read his own book so I was a little bit disappointed by that that I spent the whole book being annoyed that it wasn't the other brother only to realize I'd already read the book and it was just okay I felt like this one was a little long didn't need to be as long as it was and I didn't love sort of the things that happened I don't know if maybe I'm aging out of like even like college romances at this point because I found this one dealt with a lot of college issues that I just didn't really care about or wasn't a fan of and I found the series as a whole did that and like I said, I don't know if it's just me like getting older and not really relating to that anymore, but I found that sort of ruined it a little bit for me as well. But like, it was an okay book. Like if you like college romances, you probably like the series, but it just wasn't for me. 
Next was Always Been You by Hubie Tyler. I was so excited for this book to come out. I literally was like waiting for like the release day. And this one is, I believe she wrote like a short story, I think, with these characters and then decided to write a whole book. I didn't read the short story, so I only read the book, so I can't comment on that sort of transition. But I really love this book. It follows a girl and a guy who were raised as siblings, basically. She was adopted when she was, I think, like two and he was 13 so there was like a big age gap between them and by the time she was five or by the time she was seven he had already like moved out to go to college and never really moved back in so as much as they were like technically siblings in the sense that his parents adopted her they didn't really grow up together I guess in the sense that they were like living together all the time and like sharing a bathroom and whatever like they were related but not really and she's always had a crush on him even when she was a little kid she always thought he was like super cool and would hang around him and his friends and whatever and he just like didn't obviously make the connection because he was a lot older she was just like a little kid but now she is 17 almost 18 and he is I think like 30 or something and they're finally starting to sort of you know it goes from there and so this one is really good QB Tyler is really good at like the sort of like taboo romances but making them so that you still root for them and I thought she did a really good job with this one as well like I said I really like the way she writes these kinds of books I gave this one four stars I think I think I would stick with that rating it wasn't an all-time favorite but definitely like a really good book highly recommend that one next was Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey this was another one I was really really excited for I actually pre-ordered this one and it takes a lot for me to pre-order a book but I was really excited for this one I liked how it happened one summer sort of left us wanting Rachel's book and so I was really excited to finally get to it and this is a best friends to lovers kind of thing and I really really like this one I gave it four and a half stars I think that best friends to lovers is like such an underrated trope like it's definitely one that's really been growing on me lately and I've been trying to find a lot more books that fall in that trope so if you have any recommendations for any of those books like please leave them below and this one I liked because in this book one of the issues that sort of is dealt with is that Fox feels like he's always been viewed as a playboy and like you know the guy that's always with a different woman and different things and he kind of has just like been living with that like that's what people expect of him so that's what he does but I felt like that's something that's touched on a lot in romance books but I feel like this book did a really good job of almost going deeper in that regard and I thought that was interesting and I really liked how it all played out there's like a tiny smidgen of fake dating in this book which I really liked as well. I thought that like dynamic with her liking another guy kind of just like, you know, I feel like that's like sort of needed in Best Friends to Lovers book to get them to realize like, hey, I don't want them dating somebody else. And so I really liked that that was in this book as well. And it was just really good. And I really loved it. Next was Line Mates and Study Dates by Eden Finley and Saxon James. This I believe is the fourth book in the CU Hockey series. And this was a series that I honestly I really loved the first book and I had high hopes for the entire rest of the series because you know I love a good hockey romance but I just didn't love this one I didn't love the previous one either I took a break after the third book thinking that maybe I was just reading them too close together because I started feeling like they were very repetitive but I just I still felt like this one was repetitive even after taking the break because every single book except for one so far has been like a hockey player and a nerd and that is like the only like trope that these books seem to follow except for the one where two hockey players date each other and I just I don't know I'm like over it and even the next book like I read the synopsis and it's the same thing and I'm just like I don't know I'm tired of it I want like a different guy like give me like a party dude or a frat guy or whatever like why why does every hockey player have to date a nerd and it wouldn't even bother me so much I don't think if it weren't mentioned so often like they're like like the one guy will be like oh he's so nerdy it's cute blah, blah blah and like he'll like bring it up constantly and I feel like that was just getting irritating because it's like every book was like that so I gave this one three stars I don't think it'd be bad if you just read this book on its own but like in the series as a whole it just I find they're so repetitive and I'm getting bored I don't think I'm going to continue on with the series just because like I said I already know the next one follows the same trope too so I'm like not really interested anymore Next I read When Sparks Fly by Helena Hunting. This is the first book in her new series. It's gonna follow, I believe the sisters is like how it's done is each book's gonna be one of the sisters. And so in this first book it's about a girl who has had this best friend since college I believe and they're so close that they have moved in together 
and she hangs out with all of his friends and they come over and she's just like basically like one of the guys and like part of their group and the guys kind of all know that this one guy like should be with her but isn't like he's still like having all these one night stands and doing all these stupid things even though he's living with her now and all the guys are kind of like dude like you know why like <laughs> why are you doing this and I just thought this one was really cute I gave this one four stars it's basically what it happens is they're living together they're supposed to go on this like college reunion trip together and he's supposed to drive in his car because she hates driving in the rain because her parents both died in a car accident when they were driving in the rain and so she is like terrified she doesn't want to drive the tires on her car are bad so he's like no I'll drive we'll go in the morning whatever and he ends up bringing a one night stand over the night before and sleeping in and he's like no like I don't think I can come anymore like I'm hungover and whatever like I'm not gonna come like you can just go and she's like okay fine like I'll take my car whatever and it starts raining and she gets in a car accident and ends up in the hospital and he sort of blames himself obviously because he was supposed to be driving her and she didn't want to drive in the rain all these things and she ended up in an accident and he blames himself because he wasn't there driving and he's like if we had my tires this wouldn't have happened blah blah, blah. and they're like okay she's gonna need someone to help her you know like move around and whatever because she like broke in like you know a million bones in her body and whatever and so he's like no I'll do it like this is my fault whatever so he volunteers and they go back home and he's just sort of like helping her you know deal with like everyday things and they obviously start getting a little bit closer and I just thought this one was really cute I really love Helena Hunting's books in general so this one was just another good one to add to that list I'm excited for the rest of the series because I do like where they're sort of headed with it Next was Three Simple Rules by Nikki Sloan. This was a book that I think I got for free on Amazon or something. I just like randomly have the Kindle book and I know I didn't buy it so it must have been like some like or like maybe it was like 99 cents or something because sometimes I buy those just like on a whim. But I had this on my Kindle app for a long time and I finally decided like what the heck I'll read it. It had good reviews and it wasn't a bad book. Like it was good. I gave it three stars for me the issue with this book was there was just so many sex scenes like it was insane they faded into each other like it was just constant and it was like at the point where I was like bored like I was literally putting the book down because I was like okay like nothing is happening and it was just too much for me which I didn't know was a thing but evidently it is and so I didn't love that. It's about a girl who makes a mistake at her job and she finds out it's going to cost $10,000 to fix this mistake and she's like no I'll get the money to fix it so that the boss never finds out and she doesn't lose her job. So she decides she's going to work this one night at this like club that her friend works at and I feel like this is such a common like plot line in romance books and she's like I'm just going to work one night make all the money and leave and be done with it and basically that's what she does and I'm not gonna say anything else about this because I feel like it's sort of spoilery if I say literally anything else but I did think the sort of relationship and like the way they went about it was cool but like I said there was just too much in this book for me but other than that it was a pretty good book next was Indigo Ridge by Debbie Perry and this book I finally got from my library and I've been seeing this around especially I think around Christmas last year this book was super super popular and I didn't really think it was a romance book because the cover doesn't really you know scream romance and I was a little hesitant because even the synopsis doesn't really sound like a romance like it kind of hints at it but it's not like a solid romance synopsis so I was kind of like oh maybe I won't like it like maybe it'll be too focused on like other things and I won't like it but it does focus on sort of a I guess like murder mystery kind of thing where you're trying to figure out like what's going on because it's about this woman who moves to this small like Montana town where her grandfather is the mayor to become the chief of police and the whole town kind of hates her right off the bat because they think she got this job because her grandfather's the mayor and not because she actually like earned it or anything. So they're all kind of like not a fan of her and don't like her like right off the bat and the first night she's there she has a one night stand with a guy in the bar and she asks him if he lives in town and he's like no I don't and she's got plates from out of town so they both kind of assume that the other is a tourist and they'll never see each other again but then her grandfather is like don't worry about your job it'll be fine as long as you basically win over the Edens and the Edens is sort of like I guess the founding family of this town 
and she ends up finding out that the guy she hooked up with is one of the Edens and she's like super embarrassed and she's like wow like this is not gonna go well I'm supposed to be winning them over and like now we're like seeing each other every day and stuff and so the whole story kind of follows her you know moving to this town but there are all of these sort of suspicious suicides I guess that have happened over the past 10 years she finds out that this town has had seven and she's like statistically that doesn't line up with a town this size and there ends up being a girl that they find at the bottom of the ridge in the book and they're all like yeah definitely she jumped like you know that's what happened and this new chief of police just like really doesn't believe that and so the whole book is like her trying to prove to people that you know like she's like I'm gonna find out that these are not suicides like I'm gonna prove you guys all wrong and like do my job and whatever and so you're sort of the whole book you're like going like okay like who's responsible if it's not you know these girls aren't jumping and like there's all these little odd things that are kind of off and so the mystery part is definitely really good but I do think the romance is like done well in this book as well it's not super overshadowed to the point where you're like where's the romance like it definitely that had it going you know right alongside the regular plot and so I really like that I gave this one five stars I definitely really really loved it and it's definitely good if you love like small town books because it takes place mostly on a ranch in Montana and it was just really really good I really loved it next I read Under One Roof by Allie Hazelwood this is the first in her series of three novellas that are coming out and this one was okay I feel like I never really have thoughts about novellas I gave this one four stars it was like cute for what it was it follows a girl who ends up inheriting a house with a guy she's never met before and she just refuses to move he's like I'll buy you out and she's like nope I'm staying like I have nowhere else to go I'm gonna stay here till I figure out my life and he's like no I want you out like I want to buy you out and he keeps offering her more money and she's like nope I'm staying and they kind of hate each other because she's an, like an eco scientist and he works in oil and so she just like hates him right off the bat and is like I can't be around you and whatever and so they're kind of it's sort of like an enemies to lovers I guess because they definitely like aren't huge fans of each other at the beginning and it's just a cute little quick novella I gave this one four stars like I said it is the first one in a series I believe they all sort of go together it's like a friend group that they follow so I'm excited to get those one next I read Juniper Hill by Devney Perry and this is the second book in the Eden series and I love this one too I gave this one five stars this one was definitely my favorite I like this one even more than the first one this one follows a single mother who moves to this town in Montana and ends up living in this guy Knox's loft and Knox is one of the Edens and he is like the head chef or I guess the owner of the restaurant at this hotel in town and she is working as a housekeeper in the town and his sister has kind of offered this loft to this girl and he's like not super happy about it and so she ends up moving in and she can tell right off the bat that he doesn't want her there and she's like inconveniencing him so she's like I'm gonna look for another apartment like as soon as possible like we'll get out of your hair and whatever and her baby is like crying all night and keeps waking him up and he's like getting mad about it and things sort of go from there this one gave me like a lot of Gilmore Girls vibes just because like so much of it takes place in the kitchen in like this they say it's a hotel but in my head it was like an inn and so it really reminded me of like the scenes in Gilmore Girls where like Suki and Lorelai are like hanging out and it just reminded me a lot of that and like Luke obviously being a diner owner and this guy working in a restaurant it's just very like small town you know everyone knows each other kind of thing and I really really liked this one I loved the characters in this one and I also really love with the series how she sets up the next book because the epilogue of each book hints at the next couple and it does it in a way that you're like literally dying to get that next book like I'm so excited for the third book to come out and I think it comes out in July I literally like I cannot wait I'm so excited for the book I'm definitely gonna buy these in hard copies like I'm for sure gonna need to own this series because I'm obsessed with it I still have to read the novella the Christmas and Quincy one I do have it checked out for my library right now though so hopefully I'll get to that soon and so like I said really really loved that one definite new favorite book for sure and lastly I DNF'd one book this month and that was The Rebel by Kendall Ryan I was really sad about this I have had a hold on this book and like the whole series since September because I've been trying to get them all at the same time and so I kept like delaying the delivery of the book until I was able to get them all 
finally got them all and I like read the first one. I got 38% in before I was just like, I don't care like at all. This book, honestly, I just really, really didn't like. Um, the girl ends up at a frat party in college and right off the bat I didn't love the college-ness of her. And like I said, this could be me aging out of college romances, I don't know. But I did not like the beginning at all. And she's at this frat party and she's like, I'm gonna hook up with this guy. And I think his name was Justin, I could be wrong. But she's like, I'm gonna hook up with Justin. And she's like determined that she's gonna get this guy. And some other girl beats her to him. And she's like, oh man, like I didn't move fast enough and whatever. And she ends up upstairs because she like follows them, which was like really weird. And she ends up upstairs in the hallway and this guy comes up behind her and he's like, what are you doing? And she's like, nothing. And he's like, you're literally spying on them. And she's like, no, of course not. And they end up in his room. And there was just so many things that bothered me. First, she takes a drink from him. Doesn't even know this guy. She's just like, yeah, sure. Like, I'll drink with you in your room. Sounds reasonable. And she's like talking to him. And I think they end up hooking up. I can't even remember. And she leaves the next morning, I think, and ends up somehow dating this guy, Justin, for five years afterwards. And he becomes a famous hockey player and whatever. She ends up inheriting a hockey team that he plays for because he gets traded to. And then this random guy that she hooked up with that one night ends up becoming her, like, head of security. And it was, like, it was all just, like, so, like, conveniently, like, well-placed that I was just like, okay, there's no way that this was necessary. And I didn't even find, like... I was almost rooting for her to get with her ex. Like, I didn't even care about this guy that they kept bringing in. And I hated that it had been, like, six years since that one night. And he was still like, oh my gosh, yes, I never forgot about you and whatever. And I was like, oh my god, dude. Like, in six years, you never moved on, really. And I just, I don't know. The whole thing was so irritating. I couldn't, like, get behind it. I didn't care about the characters. Like I said, I honestly wouldn't have cared if she got back with her ex. Like, it did not bother me. I did not care. So I ended up DNFing. I may try to read The Rookie which I think is the third book in the series because the synopsis of that one does sound really good but after like how much of a mess this one seemed to be I just like am really scared but I don't know I may give that one a shot see how it goes but if that one's not good that may be like the end of Kendall Ryan for me but anyway those are all the books I read this month thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below I do new book videos every single week and I'll see you next time Bye.